Are you guys ready for Christmas? Amen. All right. So you be in prayer sa mga susunod na linggo natin, uh, lalo na sa mga visitors na parating and uh, na maging blessing tayo sa kanila at sila rin ay maging blessing sa atin. And so uh, we look forward to that. Um, spend some time in prayer as we serve the Lord in this Christmas season uh, na um, maging full of the Holy Spirit tayo sa paglilingkod natin sa Panginoon. And the Lord will bless, no doubt. Uh, do continue to pray for Nanay Maria. No? So, nag, um, talagang she is down, na down. At hindi siya makatayo. And all that. At dun siya sa sulok ng uh, malapit sa uh, river. And uh, so, do really pray for her. At nandun pa rin yung love niya para sa atin. So, All right, Matthew chapter 8, verse number 18. Book of Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Verse number 18. So, um, yung, the king has engaged in various ministries outlined in Matthew 4.23. So, chapter 4, Matthew 4.23, ang sabi ng Bible. Let's see what the Bible says here. Matthew 4.23. Bago natin basahin yung 8. But Matthew 4.23, sabi ng Bible, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing. So ito yung mga ginawa ni Jesus Christ. Preaching, teaching, and healing. So when Jesus preached, what did he preach? Repent and believe The gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Tapos, nung siya ay nag-teach, ano yung tinuro niya? Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, the sermon on the mount. So that's part of his teaching. And healing. What, who did he heal? Well, sa chapter 8, nakita natin, sa nakaraan, Jesus healed the leper. Sa chapter 8, verse 2 and 4. Jesus healed the centurion's servant. In chapter 8, verse 5 to 13, Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. Chapter 8, verse 14 and 15, Jesus healed those possessed with devils and all that were sick. In verse 16, so itong mga healings ni Jesus Christ, so he's preaching, teaching, healing. <clears throat> Yung healing niya is a demonstration, katunayan, na siya ang Messiah. Sha ang king. He is the Messiah. He is the king. Look at chapter 8, verse 17. Then it was fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. So, saan natin makikita yan? Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. Let's go to Isaiah 53, verse 4. <clears throat> Isaiah 53, verse number 4. <laughs> Isaiah 53 verse number 4 Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted <clears throat> and so he bore our griefs so kung ano yung nararanasan natin sakit sa katawan sakit sa emotion sakit sa isip the Lord bore our griefs and carried our sorrows and so um, uh, and so so on and so forth so na, Jesus is a high priest that is uh, touched with the feelings of our infirmities so even though he was sinless he still felt the effects of uh, limit, human limitations in his body and as king in the millennial kingdom siya ang healer so Sino ang may kapangyarihan na mag Jesus Christ. Kaya we, our confidence is in the Lord, never in man, never in people. So, now in chapter 8, sa so natitira ng portion ng chapter 8, merong break dito si Matthew na kung saan, sa gitna ng healing ministry ni Jesus Christ, kasi pagkatapos nito, heal na naman siya, uh, ipapakita niya yung kanyang kapangyarihan, 
Uh, so in the middle of his healing ministry and the manifestation of his power is the demands of discipleship. The demands of discipleship. So tingnan natin ang Matthew 8 verse 18. Matthew 8, verse 18. Let's read it together, then we'll pray. Together. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart unto the other side. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Father in heaven, we come before you, Lord, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, pinag-iisipan po namin ngayon, ito pong demands of discipleship. Kung ano po ang ibig sabihin ng pagiging disipulo. Now, Panginoon, ang mga katotohanan na nakikita po namin sa salita ng Diyos ay sa buhay namin, pag-isipan po namin at ilagay sa aming buhay upang kami po ay maging uh, kaaya-aya sa inyo, Lord, alang-alang kay Yesu Cristo, Lord. Tulungan niyo po kami ng banal na Espiritu Santo ng Diyos ang kumausap sa amin, Lord, at kami po ay mag-apply ng salita ng Diyos sa aming buhay. We love you. We ask your blessing upon us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. So, The Lord Jesus Christ, sa verse number 18, iniwasan niya yung multitudes. Dahil hindi pa niya time na siya ay mamatay, ilibing at muling nabuhay. It's not yet time na mag-attract siya ng mga great multitudes. So pagdating sa publicity, iniwasan niya ng Messiah. He avoided those, those things. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse number 4, for example. Matthew 8, 4. Naalala niyo yung sinabi ni Jesus Christ dun sa leper na, na hinilot niya? Look at Matthew 8.4. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man. Why now? He just healed the guy of leprosy and Jesus uh, <clears throat> commanded him not to tell any man. Tell no man. So anong ibig sabihin ng tell no man? Huwag sabihin. Bakit? Ayaw niyang ikalat na siya ang Mesaya dahil hindi pa niya panahon, hindi pa time. And so, um, eh, siyempre, nag-heal siya, eh, talagang natural nakakalat yung balita. You cannot contain the, the good news na talagang nandun si Jesus Christ. And so, uh, pero kung siya ang pagpipilian, ina-avoid niya yung multitudes. And so, um, <clears throat> look at, uh, let's see, eight... Um, Chapter 8, verse 18. Tingnan mo ang chapter 8, verse 18. Now when Jesus saw the great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart. Alis muna tayo. Dito, na, pumupulong na yung napakaraming tao. Alis tayo dito. It's not good. By the way, ano yung inaasahan ng masa? Anong inaasahan ng mga tao? Spiritual kingdom or literal kingdom? Yeah. Literal kingdom. Uh, ready na ba si Jesus Christ na magkaroon ng literal kingdom? No. Marami pang dapat mangyari. Isa doon, yung cross. Yung pagkamatay niya sa cross. So it's not time. Uh, yung mga tao ngayon, do you think, interesado ba ang tao sa spiritual truth? Or gusto nila yung healing, physical healing? You see? Ang tao ngayon, mahilig sila sa physical. Hindi... Kung kaya nila na magkaroon ng physical na walang spiritual, mas mainam. Tayo ba ay maglilingkod sa Panginoon kapag okay ang lahat? No. We learn that we're going to obey the Lord whether things are going well or whether things are not going well. This is the challenge. Ito ang challenge ng pagiging disciple ng Panginoon. And so, This portion of scripture is relevant to this whole idea. Now, yung Pharisees and scribes, mahilig sila sa masa, mahilig sila sa group, mahilig sila sa yung polls. Ano nyo ba yung polls? Opinion ng tao? Poll? Polling? <laughs> you know what polls are? Uh, eh, hinahanap natin yung opinion ng tao. Uh, ano sa palagay natin ang pag-iisip ng marami patungkol sa pagsisimba? Oh. Hmm. <clears throat> Never na dapat maglingkod tayo according to man. Or what's popular. Popular ngayon. Alisin na lang yung preaching. Popular na lang ngayon yung ano, mag-share na lang. Tsaka mag-pray. Tsaka umawit ng marami. Paulit-ulit na awit. Isang oras. Na yung preaching, wala na. Tinanggal na yung pulpit yung nagre-lecture, nakaupo na lang na merong nakasuot ng kung ano-ano. 
Hmm. <clears throat> but that's, uh, uh, that's the Pharisees. That's the Sadducees. They're interested in man's philosophy, man's thinking. But God is not, he, did, he didn't ask people how to do church. He didn't ask man to, to you know, what do you like today? You know, what do you like next Sunday? Ano yung gagawin natin next Sunday? Hulaan nyo. Anong susunod na lesson natin? Eh, hey, Pasko na! Christmas! So, hmm. Now, I'm not saying if God, does it, if God leads the pastor to preach a message on Christmas because it's Christmas, fine. That's fine. Pero, dinecide ko na matagal na <clears throat> kung ano yung susunod na chapter, ubusin natin yung book of Matthew. Kahit na Christmas, New Year, Immaculate Conception, ano pa, Halloween, <laughs> ano pa, whatever. Bahala na yung mundo, maging mundo. Tayo, meron tayong agenda galing sa langit na pag-aralan ito. Magre-report lahat tayo sa langit. Tatanungin tayo ng Diyos, anong ginawa mo sa salita ko? Oh. Iniiwasan ko na sa atin may magsasabing, hindi ko, hindi ko binasa yan. Ha? Huh? Pagdating natin kay Jose, pag nakita natin si Hosea sa langit, Hosea, hindi ko binasa yung sinulat mo, sorry. No, that's not a good testimony. That's horrible. And so, <clears throat> we're not interested in great multitudes. Now, I would love to see a great multitude saved. No, kung i-bless tayo ng Panginoon, bigyan tayo ng great multitude salvation, truly saved, Amen. That's wonderful. Kasi every, every soul counts for the Lord. Pero kung multitude lang just for fun, just for entertainment, multitudes lang pero wala namang ginagawa para sa Panginoon. Ito ang dahilan kaya maraming Baptist churches sa Pilipinas pero bulok pa rin ang Pilipinas. E ano ngayon? mataas uh, uh, sa buong Asia, ang pinakamaraming Baptist churches ay nasa Pilipinas. Kumusta na ang Pilipinas sa napakaraming Baptist churches dito? Hmm? Are we doing good? No. I don't think so. Napakaraming mga Baptist churches ayaw na sa King James Bible. Is that good? Or is that evil? That's evil. Evil. <clears throat> Napakaraming mga bagong preachers, teachers, and di na King James. Oh, that's just the beginning. Ha? Nagsisimula pa lang yan. Wala pa yung compromise sa doctrine and practice and so on and so forth. So, <clears throat> we're not interested in the great multitude We are not interested in the glory of man. The glory of man. Itaas natin ang tao. Itaas natin. Tingnan mo yung gawa namin. We are so good. We are so great. We are not interested in the great multitudes. <clears throat> We are interested in one thing. We are interested in doing the will of the Father in heaven. That's, what we're, that's our desire. That's what we want. We want to do the will of the Father. Just as Jesus did it, we want to do it the way Jesus did it. So, kailangan pag-aralan natin kung paano ginawa ni Jesus yung ministry. Well, he went about preaching, teaching, uh, healing, uh, and church planting, no doubt. And so, that's what we should be about. We should be about preaching and teaching. We don't do the healing. Wala tayong millennial power. Wala pa. Sa inaharap, magkakaroon tayo, pero matagal pa yon I mean, <clears throat> uh, relatively speaking, that's in the future. By the way, pagpasok ng Millennial Kingdom, lahat ng ceremonies and civil laws na suspended ngayon, ibabalik. So yung offering ng pag-alay ng mga tupa, isasoli ng Diyos yun sa Millennial Kingdom. Hello! <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, pero, iba naman yung purpose nun. Yun namang purpose nun ay pang-review sa sacrifice ni Jesus Christ and a testimony sa lahat na kailangan magsisit sumampalataya kay Jesus Christ. Pero sa ngayon, wala tayong physical sacrifices. So anyway, 
But anyway, <clears throat> we don't want great multitudes if the great multitudes are disobedient to God. Mas mabuti ang maliit na church kung ang bawat member ng church ay nabubuhay para sa Panginoon. Now, kung maliit lang tayo, tapos yung iba sa atin, hindi pa may bigay sa Panginoon yung buhay nila. That's, that's not good. That is not good. Okay? So, I want you to know, sa March, is our seventh year anniversary. <coughs> Seven year na tayo. Pero, in my heart, I really would like more independence. Big sabihin, independent. Kung mawala ako, dapat magpatuloy yung church. That is the will of God. That's the will of God. <clears throat> At uh, relevant doon, <clears throat> yung discipleship natin. So, we need to focus on discipleship. And that's what Jesus is doing here in chapter 8. <clears throat> So, look over in um, sa kanyang training sa kanyang disciples. <clears throat> Ba't siya nagtitrain ng mga disciples? Why is Jesus training disciples? Hmm? Ba't siya nagtitrain ng mga disciples? Yes! Aalis na si Jesus. Saan siya pupunta? Sa Heavenly Father. O, oh, sinong may iiwan? Tayo. <laughs> Anong gagawin natin? Kung ano yung tinuro sa atin ni Jesus na nakikita natin, yun ang gagawin natin. You see? God gave us something to do. And that is our responsibility to learn these things, to take heed to these things, to observe these things and to do these things, and to teach these things to the next generation. Mm. William, Mikey, Cham, Pea, Hesha, you are the next Trisha, kasama ka pa rin, Trisha, kahit nag-graduate ka na. Trisha, <clears throat> Jacobin, Tabitha, they are the next generation. Mm. Iiwanan ba ninyo yung King James Bible? Will you leave the King James Bible? Hmm? So many young people, yeah, we'll leave the King James Bible. Ha? Iwanan nyo yung godly music? Pasok na yung, yung satanistang mm, 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 mm. Hmm? Na kahit na gaano ka, kabingit talaga ng mga tao ngayon? <clears throat> Will you leave godly music? Will you leave a good biblical Baptist church hmm? for the trendy church? Ano yung trendy churches ngayon? Jesus trained disciples to take his place. And that's why we have discipleship here. <clears throat> so we need to do the same. That's our purpose. We have to train disciples. The Lord Jesus never hid the demands of discipleship. Never na tinago ni Jesus Christ ang requirement ng pagiging disciple. Hindi niya tinago. Ano ang requirements ng pagiging disciple? Lord, susunod ako sa'yo. Sabi ng Lord, Ops, mag-isip ka muna. Pag-isipan mo, saan ka matutulog? Huh? I thought I'm gonna follow you with my heart. Eh, yes. Your heart is connected to your head. Oh, saan mo ilalagay yung head mo? Ay, yung head, connected sa stomach. Anong kakainin mo? Ay, yung stomach, connected sa leg, saan ka pupunta? Mm. So, <clears throat> Jesus has demands for His disciples. Okay, ganito yon. Tuturuan ka namin ng biblical truth. Okay, lahat tayo. Under the biblical truth sa Bible. Yung iba sa atin, susunod. Yung iba, hindi susunod. That's just the facts. You will either obey the Lord and become a good disciple, or you can be a bad disciple, or even worse, a false disciple. That's even worse. 
But Jesus never hid the demands of discipleship. Never na tinago niya ang responsibility ng pagiging disciple. So look here in verse uh, uh, 19. <clears throat> verse 19. Dalawa lang ang uh, discipleship plans or examples dito sa passage natin. Dalawang klaseng disciples. So, una, yung relationship ng disciples sa possession. Disciples and his relationship to things or stuff or possession. Verse 19. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. So, sino itong scribe na ito? Well, hindi siya binigyan ng pangalan, pero alam natin yung trabaho niya ay uh, grammatius, ang kanyang trabaho. Scribe sa Ingles, grammatius sa Greek. Sa Hebrew, soferim. Ibig sabihin, yung mundo nila ay nakapalibot sa salita ng Diyos. They're all about the words of the Lord. The words. The words. Read Right and arithmetic. Arithmetic. Yung palang mga scribes, binibilang pala nila yung mga letters. Ha? Habang kinukopya nila sa kamay nila, na tatandaan natin, this was the day na wala pa yung printing press. Ha? 1400s ang printing press. Ito, uh, siguro mga AD 30, AD 33. So, ang style nila na pag, pagkopya, hindi printer, hindi printing press. Handwritten. So habang sinusulat niya ang mga bawat titik ng Old Testament scriptures, ang gagawin nila, pag nakompleto nila ang page, bibilangin nila yung letters. Hahanapin nila kung ano yung center letter. Kung yung kopya nila ay hindi tugma sa original, sinusunog nila yon. Balik na naman sa umpisa. Pag yung bilang ay hindi tumpak, winawasak nila yung kopya nila. So, eto yung original, eto yung copy. Pag tumpak yung letters, tumpak yung number, pwede nang ipasa yung kopya nila. Ganun sila ka, kahigpit sa kanilang gawain bilang scribes. They are very meticulous. Their world revolves around reading, writing, and arithmetic. And, uh, sila ay palaupo itong mga scribes na ito. They are sanay sa office, <laughs> office work palaupo. And so sabi ng scribe na ito, Jesus, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. So napansin niya yung ministry ni Jesus Christ sometimes sa Cana, sometimes sa uh, um, Uh, sa uh, Nazaren, Nazaret, sometimes sa Capernaum, sometimes kung saan-saan sa mga bahagi ng Galilee siya, sabi ng scribe, sasama ako sa iyo, Lord. Siguro, uh, ang hinahanap ng scribe na ito ay popularity. Na maging kasing popular siya ng Panginoong Iso Kristo kasi kilala siya, tanyag yan. Tanyag siya, gusto ko rin maging tanyag. Sabi nitong scribe na ito, I wanna be as popular And I want the notoriety of Jesus Christ. Pero ang hindi niya na, na, nakita ay yung buhay ni Jesus Christ ay isang buhay hindi ng popularity kundi ng sacrifice. The life of Christ is not about numbers and popularity and great multitudes. Now don't get him wrong. He healed all that came to him. Dahil siya nga ang king ng millennial kingdom. So, kung yung tao gusto lang ng hilot, pero ayaw ng relationship sa kanya, okay lang yon. Hinilot pa rin niya yung tao. He still healed them even though they don't follow him. That has nothing to do with the Lord. God is not about popularity. He is about sacrifice. Sacrifice. So, <clears throat> Jesus used His favorite title. Tingnan mo yung sagot ni Jesus Christ. Uh, chapter uh, 8, verse 20. And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man, yan ang title na ginamit ni Jesus Christ, Son of Man, 
hath not where to lay his head. Ops, bago mo sabihin na susunod ka sa akin at kung saan ako mapaparoon, sasama ka. Bago mo sabihin yon, pag-isipan mo muna ito. Wala yung mga hayop, meron silang lalagyan, meron silang pwesto. Pero yung anak ng tao ay walang may paglalagay ang kanyang ulo. Wala akong permanent address, sabi ni Jesus Christ. No permanent address. <clears throat> so, let me ask you a question. <clears throat> Ikaw, na paloopo, handa ka bang mag-travel? Hmm? Are you willing to do that? Leave your scribal responsibilities to follow me? Wait. Nako. So, iba yung point. Tapos sabi niya, son of man. Ba't sinabi niya son of man? Why son of man? Ba't hindi niya sinabi son of God? Kasi, pag son of God, pwede kong sundan yan. Biro mo, son of God? Pero hindi, sabi niya son of man. Why son of man? Saan nang galing yung son of man? Tingnan mo Daniel chapter 7 verse 13. Daniel chapter 7 verse 13. Book of Daniel chapter 7 <coughs> verse 13. This is the uh, <coughs> This is the biblical background to the title of son of man. Daniel chapter 7 verse 13. Daniel chapter 7 verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before me. So, nakita ni Daniel yung Son of Man glorified. Now, ginamit ni Jesus yung Son of Man dahil yung Son of Man ay patungkol sa kanyang pagsugo. Sinugo siya ng Ama, siya ang magiging Mesaya ng kaharian ng Diyos. He is the Son of Man. <clears throat> At yun ang favorite na title ni Jesus Christ sa kanyang sarili. Maraming tumawag sa kanya Son of God. Pero kung siya ang pagpipilian, ang gusto niyang title, Son of Man. So inulit niya yung Son of Man. Ibig sabihin ng Son of Man, siya ay humble. Hindi siya proud. Tingnan mo ang Psalm 8. Look at Psalm 8. Psalm 8 <clears throat> and verse number 4. Psalm 8 verse number 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou shouldest visit him? Ano ba talaga yung son of man? Na, anong nakikita mo sa son of man eh, na kailangan pa siyang uh, asikasuhan at bisitahin? No? So, sa isip ng, ni David, yung term son of man ay hindi talaga mahalaga. Hindi siya importante. Pero yun ang title na ginusto ni Jesus Christ dahil siya ay nagpakumbaba. It is a sign of humility. So, pag disciple ka, yung master mo, humble. Ano sa palagi mo dapat yung ugali natin? Humble, humble din. So, meron pa sa atin na pwede magmalaki? Hmm? Sa paglilingkod natin sa Panginoon? Tingnan mo, ang galing ko. O oh, tingnan mo yung alam ko, oh, galing. No, we cannot be proud disciples. We have to be humble. And so is the Lord. He is humble. Ito rin ay uh, titulo ng kapangyarihan. This is a title of power. Look at Psalm 80, verse number 17. Psalm 80, Psalm 80. Psalm 80, verse 17. Son of man is a title of power. <clears throat> Tingnan mo sabi ng Psalm number 80 verse 17. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. Psalm number 80 verse 17. So it is a title of humility but it is also a title of power. Pinalakas siya ng Diyos. He seated at the right hand and he is strengthened by God. And so it's, it's a title of power. And it is a title of his mission. His mission is to seek and to save that which was lost. So that's the Son of Man. His main purpose is to rule and reign in Jerusalem 
But in the process of ruling and reigning, he will die. He will suffer death, burial, and his resurrection and his ascension and glorification, exaltation of Christ. So the Son of Man has all this there. At sinabi ni Jesus Christ, ako ay Son of Man. Para yung scribe, mag-stop muna siya. Wait a minute. Ibig sabihin, may paghihirap pala ang paglingkod sa Panginoon. Hindi pala easy ang maglingkod sa Panginoon. That's right. That's right. Sometimes, <clears throat> most of the time, it's about sacrifices <clears throat> and humility and following the Lord. <clears throat> Now, it is best to inform the disciples about the tasks involved in following Christ than to see them fail because of the lack of knowledge. Okay, so, mas mainam na i-inform yung mga disciples patungkol sa mga responsibilities nila kesa hindi nila alam yung ginagawa nila tapos pagdating ng time, failure dahil hindi sila prepared at hindi nila, hindi nila na, natuklasan yung mga responsibilities nila as a disciple. Alright? So, let me ask you a question. Ano ba yung mga responsibilities natin bilang disciples ng Panginoon? What is some of our responsibilities as a disciple of the Lord? Hmm. Ano yung mga responsibilities ng disciples ng Panginoon? Let's say if you, if I came to you, I said, I want to follow the Lord. Ano yung mga responsibilities natin as a follower of the Lord? What would you say? What? Yes, share, evangelize the good news of Jesus Christ. Excellent. Oh. Anong involved doon? So, kailangan? What? What? Oh, share verbal testimony. Oh, sa kailangan may verbal testimony, witnessing. Okay? Ano pa? Take up your cross. Okay, that, that's pretty broad. I'm not looking for doctrine. I'm looking for practice. So, ano pa bukod sa pag-share ng witness, verbal witness? How else can we give the gospel? How else do we share the good news? Invite them to church para marinig nila ang good news. Ano pa? Teaching. Teaching? That's broad. I need something specific and practical. What else? Testimony. Oh, verbal testimony. Living a good life. Yes. What else? Out Handing out gospel tracts. Yeah. What else? Uh, yes. Buhay mo yung mga sinasabi mo. Lagay sa buhay. What else? Eh, makakaroon tayo ng 50 items na pwedeng gawin. Ha? Nakakatawa. Pero if, if you took the time to think about it, you will become creative and you will learn. Okay? So, magbigay ng tracks. O, paano naman yung social media pages ng mga generation na kabataan? Ha? Yeah. Anong ilalagay mo sa Facebook mo? Yung mukha mo? Awawa naman yung mga followers mo. Hindi. Gamitin mo yung social media mo. Ilagyan mo ng Bible verse. Para malaman nila, ah, meron palang Kristo na namatay para sa akin. You see? And more. And so much more. Writing a gospel letter. Hmm. Iniisip ka namin, mahal ka namin, sana basahin mo itong mga Bible verses. So, handwriting letters. Oh, ano pa? What else? Visitation. Visitation. Hello. Big church kami. Invited ka. Okay ako. Oh, sige. Magsusulat ako ng gospel track balang araw. Okay ako. <laughs> para pag sinabi na yung okay ako, I'm okay. Okay. Pero na ako para sa'yo. <laughs> Tapos yung susunod, liar. Oh, sinungaling. <laughs> Meron na ako para sa'yo. Follow up. 
Kasi walang nagbago sa buhay mo. Liar. No. Bahala ka na. <laughs> anyway, nakakatawa naman. Namimigay tayo yung tracks natin ngayon, Antikristo. <laughs> Tapos nagbi Merry Christmas kami. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Pag binasa nila, the coming seven-year lockdown and the Antichrist. <laughs> Parang hindi ano yung message natin. <laughs> anyway, but <clears throat> there are many things. So, what about church? Ano yung discipleship natin sa church? Sapat ba yung one service? Hmm. Sapat ba yung two service? Tatlo yung services natin. Actually, apat kung may kabataan ka. Hmm. That's just on Sunday. What about Wednesday? Hmm. You cannot be a good disciple kapag nininiglek mo yung church. Ang church ay parte yan ng plano ng Diyos. It has to find, you have to find a way to worship the Lord on Sunday. That's just a plain demands of discipleship. Plain. <clears throat> so, lampasan natin yung Sunday. Bakit? Maglilingkod lang, sasamba tayo sa Sunday lang? Ibig sabihin, lunes, pwedeng demonyo yung buhay natin? No. We move on and proceed from there. And surrender Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Surrender our days to the Lord. Pero kung hindi mo kaya surrender yung Sunday, sigurado wala ka sa lunes. <clears throat> This is basic. Pag-aralan mo yung early Christianity ng Acts chapter 2. Tingnan mo yung demands ng discipleship nila dun sa Acts chapter 2. Basahin mo. They attended church every day, daily, and from house to house. Anong ibig sabihin ng Brother Bill? Ibig sabihin, Si Peter, may bahay siya sa Galilee, binuksan niya yung bahay niya. May church sila doon. Si John Mark, yung kabataan na John Mark, yung nanay niya, pinahiram niya yung upper room nila sa Jerusalem. Doon nag-church, yung church ng Jerusalem. Si, si uh, uh, Samaritan woman ng Cana, malapit siya doon sa lungsod ng Sychar. So, Uh, Samaria at saka Sychar, may mga churches doon. Ginamit nila yung house nila para sa Panginoon. Would you not know? Balang araw, magkaroon ng church sa Bambang, sa Wawa, sa Sibris, uh, and other places. Paano mangyayari yun, Brother Bill? May mga Kristiyano, makakarinig sila ng katotohanan, magpababaptize sila, bubuksa nila yung bahay nila. Brad, gamitin mo yung bahay namin pang Bible study. Diyan magsisimula yung mga churches. It begins in their house. <clears throat> so, pwede ba bang karoon ng church sa Samaka? Sa, uh, sa ano yung? Uh, e-homes. <laughs> sa Birata. Pwede ba magkaroon ng church sa Tipas? Pwede ba magkaroon ng mga churches doon? Yes! <clears throat> But it demands discipleship. <clears throat> so, alam niyo ba kung ilan ang barangay ng Tagig? 38. There are 38 barangay sa Tagig. So, hulaan niyo ilang church ang gusto ng Diyos sa 38 barangay ng Tagig. At least, at least 38. At least, pwedeng dumami. Pwede pang mas marami. Pero pinaka-basic, 38. Na ilang yung church natin? Ilan ang church natin? One. Sa tuktukan. Ilang taon na tayo? Okay. I'm just sharing my heart. Kasi ang isip ng tao, Yay! Seven years! Woo! No. Ang isip ng bro- ni Brother Bill, Seven years, tayo pa lang. Nakakahiya sa Panginoon. Kung tutusin, dapat umabot na tayo kung saan-saan. Yeah? I'm just sharing my heart. I'm not, you know. <clears throat> Kaya yes, mag- magiging masaya ako sa seven year anniversary natin. Pero ay, ang isip ko, nako, pag wala kami, patay ang church. That's not good. 
I don't like that. The church needs to continue beyond me and my family. So, hindi ko sinasabi alis kami, ha? I'm not saying that. Wala akong plano. Wala akong plano. Pero kung sakali, namatay ako, oh, Brother RJ, bahala ka na. Amen. If you're here. Brother Bren, we need someone to step up, preach and teach the Word of God. <clears throat> si Brother John, hindi pa siya disqualified. Hindi pa disqualified si Bren. Pero kailangan ma-develop at hindi ma-develop kung wala sa church. Sana balang araw. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Brother RJ will preach and teach and Brother Bill, God's leading my heart to plant a church. Sige, mag-plant ka sa Tagaytay. Lipat na kami ni Biro lang. No. Wherever the Lord has for you, we'll be with you, we'll be behind you. But I do believe 38 villages, we need to at least, bare minimum, 38 churches. At least. I, if I know the heart of God, that's the heartbeat of God. Yung church ni Brother Cloud sa Nepal, naghahanap ngayon ng building dahil hindi na renew yung list nila. So, is that positive or negative? Sa, t- sa tingin ko, that's a positive. Bakit? Matuturuan sila kung paano mag-pray, mag sa Panginoon na mag-provide ng building land. Na mahirap yon Mahirap yon Imagine, halimbawa, Mrs. Santos tells us, ayaw ko na sa inyo. mag na kayo ng ibang lugar. She can do that. O, anong gagawin natin ngayon? Ha? Saan tayo magkikita? Sa McDo. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Kasi may upstairs naman sila doon, no? Tapos may french fries pa, no? Feed the multitude. Hindi <laughs> ano ba yan? Multiply the nuggets. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just talking. The discipleship has demands. At lahat tayo, kailangan matuto tayo mag-sacrifice. Everybody has to learn to sacrifice. There is no discipleship without sacrifice. Yung master natin, nag-sacrifice siya. Hindi tayo pwedeng sumunod sa kanya na wala tayong sacrifice. We have to sacrifice. <clears throat> The second Disciple, tingnan mo yung verse, uh, <clears throat> where am I here? Sorry. Matthew 8. <clears throat> Matthew 8. And verse 21. <clears throat> and another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. That's a good, that's a good request. Lord, susunod ako sa'yo, pero unahin ko lang muna na iburol yung tatay ko. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Now, ito ang unang mali ng disciple na ito. Tingnan mo yung sinabi niya. Me first. Verse 21. Suffer me first. Me first. Me first. Yan ang language ng hindi disciple. That is not a disciple's attitude. That is not a disciple's language. Me first. No, it is not me first. That's the major problem. So, ang ibig sabihin ng request nitong disciple na ito, hindi pa namatay yung tatay niya. Hindi pa namatay yung tatay niya. Pero pag namatay yung tatay niya, saka na lang siya maglilingkod sa Panginoon. Let me tell you something. Can I tell you something? There's never a good time to follow Him. There will never be a perfect good time to follow the Lord. Huwag na kayong maghintay na maglingkod sa Panginoon. Sa kanalang kapag magkaroon ako ng pera. Sa kanalang kapag lumaki mga bata. 
Sa ka na lang kapag nagkaroon ako ng ganito. Sa ka na lang. Never na darating ang time na masasabi mo, ready na ako na maglingkod sa Panginoon. No. There's never a good time to follow Him. Now is the time to follow Him. Follow Him. Follow Him. Kahit na hindi maganda ang lagay, kahit hindi perfect ang situation, kahit na may mga baluktot at hindi tama or whatever, huwag ka na mag-excuse. Follow Him. Ano yung layunin ng Diyos para sa buhay ko? Hanapin mo at gampanan mo yon. Follow Him. Follow Him. Whether it's good, uh, 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 whether it's bad, whether it's early, whether it's late, follow Him. Follow Him. So, Jesus respond, ang respond ni Jesus Christ dito, let the dead bury their dead. Saan kinuha ni Jesus yon? Sa Leviticus chapter 21. Tinamang Leviticus chapter 21. Leviticus chapter 21. <clears throat> so sa pagpapare ng mga Leviticus, ng mga Levites, and not all the Levites were priests, but those that are in the priestly office are commanded by the Lord not, not to leave their responsibilities for the death of their loved ones. Hmm? Hindi pwedeng iwanan yung pagpapare para sa para iburol yung mahal sa buhay. Did you know that? All right, Leviticus chapter 21. Verse number 1, The Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, There shall be none be defiled for the dead among his people. But for his kin that is near unto him, that is, for his mother, for his father, for his son, for his daughter, and for his brother, for his sister a virgin, which is nigh unto him, which hath no husband for her, may, he may be defiled. But he shall not be defiled himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. So, pagdating sa, sa kamatayan, hindi, even death, taking care of the dead loved one is not an excuse to leave your discipleship behind. <clears throat> marami. Marami na kaming nakita, mga Kristiyano. Pag nag-asawa, hindi na mag-church. Pag nagka-boyfriend, hindi na mag-church. Pag nag- nagkaroon ng anak, hindi na na mag-church. Iniwan yung pagiging disciple dahil nagbago ang status sa buhay. Naging college, kaya hindi nag-church. Nagawa ng high school, ng grade school, pero college, college na. May trabaho, hindi na kailangan ang church or whatever. Iniwan na ang church. Discipleship, iniwan. Ah, namatay ang loved one, nag-quit. We've seen that. And I'm telling you right now, Let the dead bury their dead. Let the dead bury their dead. Sila na mag-aasikaso ng mga patay nila. Tayo, meron tayong inaasikaso. Ano yun? Pagsunod natin sa Panginoon. We will take care of what God wants us to do. <clears throat> If the Lord desire for a disciple to do something, it has to be done now. Tandaan niyo yun, ha? Kung may layunin ng Diyos para sa iyo, hulaan mo kung kay- kailan niya dapat, kailan niya, kailan niya inaasahan na gampanan natin ang layunin ng Diyos sa buhay natin. Now. Now. Kung hindi ka save. Halimbawa lang ha, I think sa so nakikita ko dito, I think majority save. I think may duda ako sa iba sa inyo. Hindi biro lang. <laughs> I believe We are mostly saved. Now, kung hindi ka saved, hulaan mo kung nung araw dapat na masave ka. May duda? You, is that a question? Hindi. Clear the that? Kung hindi ka saved ngayon, ngayon ang araw ng kaligtasan na gusto kang isave ng Diyos. Is that true? Yes. O kung ngayon ikaw ay disipulo, dahil ikaw ay saved, kailan ka dapat maglingkod sa Panginoon? 
Now! Huwag ka na maghintay. Give God your heart now. Serve God now. Alangan, pagdating natin sa langit, doon lang tayo magsimula na maglingkod sa Diyos. Alam mo ba, pag nasa langit tayo, titingin tayo sa buhay natin dito sa lupa. At dito natin makikita na sa kalagitnaan ng kahirapan, sumunod pa rin tayo sa Diyos. At ginawa pa rin natin ang layunin ng Diyos sa mga araw na ito. So, yung mga wonderful, glorious, heavenly days natin sa kalangitan, which is future, merong kaluwalhatian na hindi mararanasan natin doon na mararanasan natin dito. Ano yon Yung paglingkod natin sa gitna ng kahirapan. Never natin mararanasan yan doon. Kaya dapat maglingkod na tayo now. now. <clears throat> Alam mo ang sagaba sa discipleship? Yung sabi niya dito, me first, at saka, let me bury my father. Yung pag-aabala sa walang kabuluhan. Siyempre, di pa patay yung tatay niya. Question, kailan mamamatay yung tatay niya? Tapos sasabihin mo, Lord, hintayin mo lang, sir, na iburul ko muna yung tatay ko before na maglingkod ako sa iyo. Oh. Kailan siya mamamatay? Naka-life support na ba siya? Naka-hospice care na ba yan? Hindi, wala pa. O di, kailan ka maglilingkod? Sa susunod na lang. Eh si Jesus Christ, gaano siya katagal sa earth na naglingkod? 33. Oh, 33 years old siya. Three and a half years lang. Three and a half years lang yung buhay niya dito. Wala siyang time para sabihin, oo, oh, sige, next Sunday na lang. Next Wednesday na lang. Sa New Year! Yes! Kasi may magic yung 2024. Bagong taon. Magbabago ako. If you don't serve Him now, I highly doubt you will serve Him later. I highly doubt it. I don't see it in the scriptures. I don't see it here. <clears throat> Tutusin, manghihina ka. Kung hindi ka lalago sa pananampalataya, babaliktad ka. You will grow weak and weak. Sang araw gigising ka, makakalimutan mo yung prayer. Makakalimutan mo yung Bible reading. Makakalimutan mo yung mga pangako ng Diyos. Makakalimutan mo mag-church. Makakalimutan mo mag-witness. Makakalimutan mo yung mga bagay na, na, na natutunan mo. Mas masigasig ka nung una kang naligtas. Pero yung dulo, mahina. Na parang hindi ka ligtas. Enemy ng disciple, distraction. Hindi destruction. Ha? Distraction. Ano yung Distraction. Yung parang yung telephone mo na eh 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 nagbabasa ka ng Bible. Eh eh ayo ano kaya ano ayo 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 Itong Bible susunod na lang yan. Ah sa pagpe-pray. Oh Lord, tulong mo. Eh ring. Ayo ayo. Distraction. Distraction is the enemy of discipleship. Distraction. Distract. Pupunta na ako sa church. Ay, may, may salo-salo. Anong oras kaya? 10. O di kaya 11. O di kaya 1. Sa linggo. Ang party nga dito. Yung party nila. Linggo. Bira mo? Walo na ang araw sa linggo. Sa isang linggo. I- <laughs> Sunday pa ang pinili. Hindi, alam ko, seven. <laughs> Pero sa, sa anumang araw na pwede nilang piliin, 
Ba't nila pinili yung Sunday? Pwede namang Monday, Tuesday, ganun din sa eskwela. Ay, mga estudyante, dito kayo, Sabado, Linggo. Teka, nasa inyo ba sila Monday hanggang Friday? Yes. Pati rin yung kaninang Saturday and Sunday, kukunin nyo? Yes. Pakainin kaya ninyo? Buhay na rin ninyo. What? What about that? Ay, hindi, hindi pwede. If you are distracted, you cannot be a good disciple. Ha? Walang distracted na mahusay na disciple. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. The Lord Jesus is interested in wholehearted discipleship. Wholehearted discipleship. Yan ang gusto ng Panginoon. Both men and scribes and Pharisees had a poor view of discipleship. Napakababa ng pananaw ng tao sa discipleship. Minamalit nila yung mga bagay ng Panginoon. Pero hindi nila alam, ito ang pundasyon ng masigasig na pamilya. Ito ang pundasyon ng masigasig na lipunan. Ito ang pundasyon ng masigasig na bayan ng sumusunod sa salita ng Diyos. At kung palayo tayo ng palayo sa salita ng Diyos, lalo tayong magiging mahina at magulo. <clears throat> yung desire for popularity at saka yung walang pakialam o walang pagbabahala sa mga bagay ng Diyos. Negligence sa salita ng Diyos. That is another problem of bad discipleship. Negligence. Binabaliwala natin ang salita ng Diyos. <clears throat> Not good. Not good. So, yan ang agenda natin, okay? So, <clears throat> that's our message. This is coming from the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. This is the Messiah. This is the King's perspective of discipleship. Evaluate your relationship to your possessions and evaluate your relationship with people. Pag inuna mo yung possession o yung relationship ka sa Diyos, you are a bad disciple. But thank God we can prioritize pwede natin unahin ang Panginoon, paglingkuran siya, at siya ang magbibigay sa atin ng possession and relationships. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these things. And we pray that we would take heed to those things that distract us from serving you and uh, be mindful of your will for our lives, that we would pursue those things and follow your will instead of popularity and negligence of these things I pray we would take heed to your word and I pray you would bless the Holy Spirit of God would make our church independent and that we would plant other churches around us Lord we ask that you would help us in that endeavor we love you Lord and, and we confess our sins and we ask that you bless us in Jesus name Amen habang nakuyo ko ang ulo nakapikit ang mata